What's up, Taylor Lee for Congress? It's YouTube here, and uh, today we have another episode of Military News for you. So the, the main headline for this week is that the Chinese military is building more ICBM silos. Now, this doesn't mean that China is building more nuclear missiles. Uh, more silos does not mean more missiles. These might not even be silos. Uh, this is just coming from reports where satellite imagery says, you know, it looks an awful lot like you're building silos down there. And China has at least 250 uh, potential silos under construction. Um, but here's the thing, is a lot of people are afraid of more and more armament coming from China, and it's, it's pretty well founded. However, China already has at least 200 nuclear weapons that are fielded. <clears throat> and... What this means is that China can feasibly hold on to uh, what we call minimal deterrence. And so what that means is the United States or Russia could both obliterate China and wipe it off the face of the planet. But a retaliatory strike from China with 200 warheads, and let's assume at least 150 of them hit their target, that's only a 75% success rate, which is pretty low. But hear me out. So 150 missiles, if each one is aimed at uh, one of the 150 largest cities in the U.S., um, it would just be an unacceptable cost. As far as infrastructure, manpower, um, it would wipe the country off the planet, whether it's Russia or the U.S. Um, even if it happened in India, a country whose population is only like 100 million people less than China. So, so most likely, um, what's going on here is that these silos, if they are silos, are not going to be housing new nuclear weapons because China is spending less than $200 billion a year on defense because its economy can't project the, uh, the weight that the U.S. can. So the U.S. is spending over $700 billion annually on defense. And a lot of this is for maintenance, but it's also upgrades and stuff like that. But China can't afford that much on defense yet. And so most likely <clears throat> what is happening here is that China is holding on to its minimal deterrence and then using its assets more wisely to upgrade its military. There's a really big effort in most militaries to modernize. That's a very expensive process. And so um, when it comes to buying more modern nuclear missiles and weapons or modernizing your traditional ground forces, which, um, as we learned from the Korean War, uh, nuclear weapons don't prevent war. They just prevent nuclear war, um, ironically enough. So what this means, it, at least in my mind, is that China is going to be focusing on things like better training, better rifles, better armor, um, things like that. And also probably electronics, um, electronic warfare advancement, um, the, the merchant militia fleet that they have probably upgrading that a little bit as well. Uh, so I'm not too worried. And even if China does build more nuclear weapons, it doesn't really mean much. All it means is that they can do more damage in a nuclear altercation, which is extremely unlikely because of mutually assured destruction, which is kind of a terrifying concept. However, um, it's worked for decades in preventing nuclear war. Because the idea is, if you nuke one of my cities, I'm going to nuke one of yours, and then it just continues to escalate until there's nothing left of either country. And so uh, the Soviet Union and the United States came up with the agreement that if you launch anything, we just launch everything. Um, so that's kind of where that concept comes from. And like I said, these might not even be um, nuclear silos. China and Russia both seem to favor kind of what the U.S. does with its submarines. However, instead of using submarines, they like to use trucks. Uh, because the trucks can move. They can all be stored in one place. They can deploy quickly. Uh, let's say you have a 15-minute notice. You can get that truck dozens of miles or kilometers away. So... Um, the secondary strike capability of trucks, assuming you have a good initial warning system, is is beyond good enough to 
protect the nation. So um, these silos could be water tanks, for all we know. Just, just really weirdly shaped water tanks out in the desert uh, for, hypothetically, future projects that China has planned. And China doesn't like to share a lot, so we can only speculate. Reasonably, it is silos or meant to make us think that they're silos. For example, the U.S. has over 400 intercontinental ballistic missiles based in land-based silos. But we have thousands of silos. And this is another reason why I don't believe China is making more weapons because... You want to have more silos than you have missiles. That way the enemy has to guess which silos contain missiles. And if they're dozens of miles apart, for example, in the U.S., I think most of our missiles is a minimum of 18 miles apart. Then it doesn't matter if you're using a Zarbamba on each one. The fireball for the Zarbamba, for context, was only three miles wide. You can't use any single nuclear bomb to take out more than one missile silo, which is extremely wasteful if you have thousands of silos and 400 missiles and you you don't know which one. So um, this gets kind of into a loop of nuclear policy, which I'm going to talk about in a, a future video. Um, but it could be a huge waste if the enemy decides to invest heavily in an initial strike to try and take out every single silo. Uh, and the more missiles they do that with, the fewer weapons they have for a secondary strike or uh, to hit infrastructure and population centers. Up isn't really newsworthy. Um, I just thought it would be interesting and you guys can get some video of this. Um, <clears throat> the F-35 is getting used in international war games now. Uh, here is footage of an F-35B used by the Australian forces at Talisman Sabre. And Talisman Sabre is a joint war game. Uh, this year it was held by Canada, Japan, South Korea, uh, the United Kingdom, Australia, obviously, uh, New Zealand, and the United States. And I actually saw an article about this a week ago, two weeks ago. Um, basically, they were talking about how there was a Chinese spy ship out on the periphery, on the horizon, watching the war games happen. <laughs> and the, the Australian leader was like, he wasn't really worried about it. And people were like, why aren't you worried about that? He's like, oh, they were here last year too and the year before. They don't interfere. They just watch. Um, so that's a little concerning. But at the same time, I mean, the Chinese have satellites. So you can't really expect to keep a huge war game um, completely hidden. So that's why things like cryptography and... Um, cybersecurity are so important because those are the things that the enemy can't see right away. So you got to invest in protecting that. And in that way, it's kind of a blessing that China has been cyber attacking all of our corporations because uh, the best technologies are yet to be di discovered and invented. So uh, China attacking us with cyber stuff now is a good thing because it gives us the environment to develop resistance to these kinds of attacks and then when we have even better technology than we have now china won't be able to uh to get that because we will have been wise to their antics though it, china should have never been able to close that gap anyway Cybersecurity has been lacking in the u.s though i think we're ahead of all the other nations as far as cybersecurity. um but yeah here's footage of f-35s in training check it out <clears throat> and finally this week, Britain is nationalizing a steelmaker. Uh, the company Sheffield Forge Masters is getting bought for two and a half million uh, pounds or three and a half million U.S. dollars. That's right, baby. European powers are nationalizing their military structures again. Um, this is just interesting. I find it fascinating and I think more... Companies should be nationalized, though in the U.S. I'm not entirely sure um, if our system of business could sustain that. However, um, Britain, what they want to do here is protect the interests of, of the steel company because they need that for their nuclear submarines and other defense sectors. And if a corporation has sole control over that, kind of like uh, last week how we discussed uh, China having control over a lot of foreign markets, such as 
um, gunpowder and stuff like that, then the nation might struggle during a conflict because the corporation could jack up prices or the corporation may be mismanaged because the corporation's being operated under the premise of a bottom line instead of defending the nation. And so to balance that nationalization, as far as defense goes, is a really good idea of corporations. The minor the minery. The Ministry of Defense said that it plans to invest over 400 pounds over the next 10 years to improve the production of assets critical to defense. And that includes um, stuff for like a new heavy forge line and uh, major machine tool replacements, which is pretty interesting coming from Britain, who sold one of its ports to, uh, you guessed it, China. But I don't know anything about that, so I'm not going to comment too much on it until I get some more research on it so we can learn more about that. But, um, yeah, there it is. There it is for the week. Thanks for watching, everybody. I appreciate your, what do you call it, patronage. You're not really buying anything from me. Um, thank you for your viewership. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Thanks for stopping by.